Today I'm going to talk about Lesson 8 in the Books Point Lace Workbook. This pattern is started in exactly the same way as the last bookmark in pattern 7. We're starting with three false picots. And the techniques in this, we have the usual foot picot edge, the point ground, cloth stitch it within gimps, but we also have fingers in gimps and tallies. And we also have an area where the gimp runs double around this bottom shape. And I'll be looking at each of those in this video. This pattern uses 26 pairs of Finker 80, which is what I've used right through the workbook, and also two pairs of gimps, which will be added to outline the shapes in the pattern. So I've started off, I've worked three false picots at the top of the point, which is putting pairs open formation around the pin, adding five twists, and then working a cloth stitch. So starting in the middle, I'm going to cloth stitch the three from the right through the three from the left. To get this nice cloth stitch point and to start the two trails. I'm then going to put the pin in the top inside pinhole and tension the threads. The two pairs that are closest to the pin are the ones that become the worker for each side. So cover the pin and take them back out to the respective sides and work the next pico. Just a normal pico, not a false one this time and this is going to continue along this diagonal edge doing this. Each time you come back through the cloth stitch we will then add a pair on to form the point ground. Add a pair on a temporary support pin which is just hung anywhere on the pattern. Cloth stitch through and put a couple of twists on and the pin up cover the pin and then leave that pair out for the point ground. And continue to do this all the way down the trail to this point here and the same on the right hand side. I'll just do a, another one just to show you again and then I'll work the rest off camera so we get to the interesting part with the cloth stitch. So work the pico Come back through, add a pair on a temporary support pin. And when you're adding pairs in like this, don't put the twists on the workers before you add the pair in because we don't want any spaces between the trail and the pair you're adding in. So there's no twists between them at that point. Put the pin in, touching it up and cover the pin. And each time I've added a pair in, you'll notice I'm putting the twists on to remind myself that those pairs are now left out because if you come back across, not so much on this one but if you've got a lot of pairs on a piece you can easily forget to leave that one out. I'll leave it out and then come back through again. And as I say I'll add all the pairs on down this left trail until we get to somewhere here so that I can work all of this and I'll do the same on the right hand side. And I'll come back to you shortly on camera. I've now got enough pairs in from both sides to be able to work cloth stitch. But before I do that, I've got to work two rows of point ground on both sides. So I'm just going to do that next. Point ground, as you know if you've been working through the workbook, is half stitch and two twists. And I'm going to work diagonally on the left for the first two rows. This will just take a minute or two, so I'll again just show you the start of it, just to remind you, and then I'll work the two rows 
remainder of the two rows off camera just so it doesn't make the video quite so long and hopefully keep you engaged. You can of course keep switching the video off and pausing it while you actually do this if you're working alongside it and hopefully you'll be understanding the pattern a little bit by now to be able to do this bit on your own. I'm now ready to add the gimp in for the first ring. I've wound a coloured gimp so that you hopefully be able to see it easier on the video but traditionally this would be the same colour as the thread you're working. However today we do tend to actually put in colour a lot more than has been used traditionally. I'm just going to hang the gimp on a temporary support pin in the middle of the work and then I'm going to pass it through the left two pairs that are coming into this cloth stitch and put two twists on and through the right pairs and put two twists on. And then I'm going to start the cloth stitch. So the first two in the middle will cloth stitch together and the right hand one is going to become the worker and move the pin, tension it up. The right hand pair, the worker, goes to the left first and takes in the next pair in cloth stitch. Cloth stitches back to the right and takes in the next pair. And then cloth stitches back to the left. Now you'll notice this time on the working diagram the worker actually goes out through the gimp to work a point ground stitch or a catch pin outside the gimp. So we've two twists before, three after, work a point ground stitch and put the pin as a catch pin against the gimp. Because the worker is coming out through the gimp doing a U-turn after doing the stitch and going straight back in. And this holds the gimp without let in the worker, pull it in, keeps it nice and neat. If you allow it to pull in then it becomes nibbled and looks quite untidy. And we do the same on the right hand side. Two before, three after and a point ground stitch. And the catch bin against the gimp on the left of the pairs this time and then the pair comes back in. And then finish the cloth stitch of the circle in the normal way. So this pair has been left out through the gimp and I put the two twists on before but I don't put any twists on after at this stage because another gimp will be crossing over and going through these pairs that are being left out. Over to the right and leave a pair out on the right through the gimp, two twists before again and then down to the bottom pin and you have two pairs left at the bottom pin. Again cover the pin, two twists and take them out. <clears throat> now at this stage very often you would cross the gimps and take them round but I'm not going to do that, I'm going to introduce a second pair of gimps at this point because we need two pairs of gimps further down the pattern and it's the easiest place to add them. So I'm going to introduce the second gimp now and this second gimp will go around the upper part of the shape on both sides. So I hang the gimp in the middle on a temporary support pin and cross the gimps on both sides. The existing gimp is around the top cloth stitch shape becomes the inner gimp on these rings on the inside there. So I'll focus on the left hand side first. I'm just push those to one side and now I can move that pin over a little. And the new gimp will now come up through those two pairs that have come out of the shape and put two twists on. And you also have two coming in from the left once you've done these two point ground stitches outside the gimp. I'll just do those two pins. In actual fact there's three pins that I need to work before I'll be able to work the cloth stitch shape 
So I'll do the three point ground stitches outside the gimp and they're now ready. Bring the gimp through those two that are coming in and again put the twists on. And now work the cloth stitch shape in exactly the same way as we did the first one but this time the left hand pair becomes the worker because it's going to go towards the centre first. Now on this one, on the centre of the flower, you have to work both sides to that point to be able to do that centre one once it comes out at the next pin. So you get halfway on these side ones and then have to stop and do the other one. It's going to come out, so this is the, the centre gimp from the top. Now you can see why I put the coloured ones in, you can actually see the gimps a little easier. It comes out, it's an isolated honeycomb, so it has two twists on and it will sit there and wait for the other side to catch up. So again, take these two through and twists on and now I've got to work the same three pin holes on the right hand side. And that one comes in. I put two on. No. And that one's to come in. And now I can work this one. And again, starting at the top pin hole. And you're going to work from that top pin hole towards the centre. So the right hand one becomes the worker. Now come back towards the centre, it will go out, two twists before, two after and work an isolated honeycomb, half stitch and twist, pin, half stitch and twist. And then they return through the gimps to finish those cloth stitches. I'm not forgetting to put the twists on afterwards, which I almost did there. Now you're coming across the left side, and this is the one where you take it out to work a catch pin stitch in point ground on the outside of the gimp. Now you'll find this quite often in patterns that are geometric, and it is in order to fill up the cloth stitch. If it was going to be a floral one, then it would be worked slightly differently and you'd be adding pairs in, even for this small shape. But by doing this, taking the pairs out, it saves putting them in. The right hand one, the first one is ready to go out, so I'll put the twists on to remind me. The next one is left out and you'll end up with two at the bottom pin again. And again, I can take that one out because I know it's going out there. Take that one out. Um, I always put the twists on again afterwards. I've taken them out when I know they're not going to need to be untwister for a gimp. And now to finish off this one I take the pairs through and I will cross the gimp. And I will stop at that because this bottom petal has these pairs of gimp double around this shape in order to transfer them down a little bit further. So I finish this side 
and then we'll be ready almost to do the fingers and gimp which I have covered in a, an earlier video so I'm not going to go into great detail about but I'll just talk you through them. The main tricky bit on this is getting the gimps going in the right place with it being double in places and single in others. So that pair's left out. This one I've left out after the pin. Two at the bottom. Again, bring it back round. It's going all the way around, and that one's coming around there. Now, at the top, you've got all of these pairs of gimps. This one is going that way. And you've now got two pairs coming in to this, from each side. This one will also cross and go back down. So the one from the right is going around the top of the shape and then back down that side. The one from this side will go in the same way on the opposite side. I hope that makes sense. So you've got the two pairs one and pair on each side to do the cloth stitch shape at the bottom. And the bottom one goes towards the right, so the left hand pair becomes the worker. And each time you're taking both pairs through the pair that's coming out. I've just got to work a bit more ground outside here before I can finish this cloth stitch. So I'm just going to talk you through the actual fingers in gimps. When you come to the bottom of this cloth stitch shape, you will have two pairs from each direction. The pair from the right goes to the left and this blue line here on my pattern is actually a double gimp and it continues as a double gimp all the way around that shape. On the right hand side you've got a double here, one will actually continue down that line on its own so it's just a little bit of a, a area there outside this pinhole where it is single. The other one comes along this line up there, isolated honeycomb inside, back down point ground in there, up again, isolated honeycomb, back down, isolated honeycomb inside there, and then out along this line and isolated honeycomb stitches inside. Anything that is outside the gimp is point ground, anything inside the gimp, such as that and those in the points of the fingers, are isolated honeycomb. And then it travels back up and rejoins with its partner up here to travel back down as a double. The top ring is a double and the bottom ring is a double. And if you just follow the diagram in the book, hopefully you'll be able to get the hang of the direction of these pairs of gimps and make a nice neat job of the fingers. There are no prizes for guessing and spotting where I went wrong on one of the fingers but do watch where the final pin is before it does the turn to come back because I went too far on one of them. 
even though I'm experienced and I design the pattern, it's so easy to make mistakes. So just look at where the line goes and which pin it goes round. Hopefully that'll be helpful to get you started on this pattern. If you've got any comments, please leave me a comment below. Subscribe to hear of new videos coming soon. Give me a thumbs up and let me know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been helpful.